Three hours worth of mana transfers later. I was born on a human ranch and raised in Salisbury, along with a number of other children. They probably needed more humans to fight against the moor. They treated us all very well. They didn't just provide us with food, clothing, and shelter, they also built a school for us to attend. I remember how much that surprised me since I had always heard that any humans who leave a ranch would never be free. But that's why I never had any animosity towards fairies. It's thanks to them that I grew up big and strong and eventually got this spear. However, I still know very little about the fairy who took me in. That's probably because they raised a lot of human children, not just me. Around the time I became a full-fledged soldier, I heard that the fairy who had taken us all in from the ranch passed away. Shortly afterwards, the rearing house where our school had been in was shut down, and I put Salisbury behind me. After that, I dedicated myself to combat training until I took on an escort job in a small forest village. I was told I should enter the next joust in Camelot, and even got a letter of recommendation. Oh, I heard about that. That was the Robin Redbreast tournament they held five years ago. So you were the human knight who made it all the way to the finals. That's amazing. Yes, I was quite lucky to make it to the end, though I had a very poor showing in the finals. Still, I am glad I was able to speak with Queen Morgan directly. It gave me the resolve I needed to make up my mind. Talking to her made it clear that she sees humans and fairies both as no more than tools. She is perfectly satisfied with the current state of Britain and has no intention of changing it. Once I saw that for myself, I ultimately decided to make an organization that would help the Child of Prophecy when she appeared. Huh, no kidding. So this whole rebel army thing was originally your idea. Was it Oberon who came up with the idea of making it into the Round Table army then? Yes, it was. My comrades and I were protecting a merchant caravan from Moor when one day Lord Oberon came up to me and said, You'll never get anywhere like that, Percival. If you keep this up, your white light will rust. From then on, he began managing us himself, and before I knew it, our rebel army had become the Round Table Army. Ah, I get it. Oberon's a real smooth talker. Gotcha. So what's this white light of yours anyway? You're only human, so if you're defeating fairies with it, it must be a pretty impressive technique. Oh, it's not a technique. White Light is my spear here. It's the Spear of Selection, one of Ash's weapons. The fairy who took me in gave it to me. Apparently, it's a holy spear that only responds to one without sin, and no fairy can use it. Selection? Does that make it kind of like your staff, Artoria? I'm not sure, but I think they're at least a little different. I mean, one's a spear and one's a staff. I do sense something similar about them, but the spear feels... well... empty? I can tell it's an amazing weapon, but it also seems like it's not... chosen anymore. I'd agree the sa I'd agree with that. I sense the same thing whenever I hold it. It feels like a piercing wave of regret and profound grief over a past failure. The spear's inner lamentations well up every time I swing it, and they leave behind trails of magic light like tears. That's why it came to be known as the White Light. This spear is no longer meant for saving fairies. Now it only exists to kill them. That's not how it was originally supposed to be used, but that also means it's the only weapon out there able to stand up to the Tan Lin. But if it is true that only one without sin can wield it, I expect there will come a time I won't be able to wield it. That's not true, Percival. You're a wonderful person. You protect the weak and you never act out of self-interest. You're the ideal knight. You can never be seen as a sinner. If I tried to use that spear, I'd be rejected before I could even touch it for the sin of being too weak. Don't be silly, Gareth. You know there's no such sin. Dawn is approaching, Percival. It was a difficult march, but we made it in time. Uh, shall we deploy the troops once we cross the next hill? Please do. I'm putting Landon in charge of things, uh, the company while I'm gone. 
I'd like you and him to remain on standby for one hour. The Child of Prophecy and I will go on ahead and make our way north into Norwich using the route through the sewage system that, count op that the Count opened for us. Once we're inside Norwich, we'll rendezvous with the anti-Spriggan faction. After that, we'll start a riot in the city and take advantage of the confusion to open the main gate from the inside. Once it's open, I want your troops to neutralize the Queen's soldiers on the ramparts. In the meantime, we'll take Landon's troops and split up to take out the Queen's soldiers occupying Norwich. Once the enemy forces have been neutralized, we'll surround the Vault Castle. Understood. Please be careful out there, Commander. And that goes for you too, Aurelia. I'm sorry to ask so much of you again. That's okay. I'm used to it. Child of Prophecy, please look after Percival. There you have it. From here on, we'll be on our own. Our goal is to infiltrate Norwich while it's still dark and create a distraction. Please make sure you're thoroughly prepared, Gouda. This is probably going to be a long battle. Hey, hey! You're right on time, Gouda! Count Pepperon, you're here! Well, of course, Han. I invited you, didn't I? I'll go wherever I have to, be it the sewers or the morgue. Now, let's see who else we've got here. Ms. Da Vinci, Muramasi, Muramasa-chan, Gareth-chan, Habetrat, and... Oh my! What have we here? An enemy. <laughs> An enemy? Oh, where, where? Save me, Percy, save me! P Percy? Please cut it out, Pepe, or I'll tell him your real name. Okay, you're right. I'm sorry. I just got a little excited since I've never seen anyone like him before. Welcome to Norwich's sewer system. I take it that you are Percival of the Round Table Army. I'm Count Pepperona, but please call me Count. Oh, so you're the Count. My apologies, I thought you were a night call at first. It's a pleasure to meet you, Count. Yes, I am Percival of the Round Table Army. Thank you for telling us about this crisis in Norwich. Not at all, hon. If anything, I should be thanking you guys for handling the bloody parts for me. Hmm, I just noticed one of you is missing. What happened to him, Gouda? Who, Oberon? Oberon? He's not the sort to be on the battlefield. He's all about having the right people for the right job. No, I'm talking about that peppy friend of yours, Red Rabbity. Red Rabbit stayed behind in Londinium. He said he wasn't going to come along if he can't pull the carriage. Oh, I see. Well, that was smart of him. Aurora must have taught him well. Okay, then. Let me show you the way. Once we reach the surface, I'm going to have you all split up into two teams. Team B will draw the Queen's soldiers away from the main road, and Team C will unlock the main gate from the inside. Artoria, Muramasa-chan, you two will be Team B. Percival, Gareth-chan, Habitrot, you three will be Team C. Gouda, I want you and Da Vinci to support both teams. We're seriously outnumbered here, so you'll need to hustle to ensure both teams have as much servant power as they need. You can handle that, right? This is hardly your first rodeo, after all. Of course, but I couldn't help but notice there was no Team A in that lineup. You're right! We'll have to remedy that someday. Once you're a real master in the true sense of the word, you, me, and Caddock can all be Team A together. I can't wait! Understood. Shall we? Oh yes, it's time Spriggan finally got what's coming to him. Quick aside, I think it's cute Count Pepper Pepperoncino here doesn't want to make an A team because he still considers himself part of the A team from before. And back we go. Lord Spriggan, the Round Table Army has begun attacking the main gate. Hmm, you don't say. 
The Round Table Army isn't like the other rebels. They are, in fact, a proper army. They would never launch a frontal assault on our great with only 300 soldiers. Which must mean... Lord Spriggan, the Queen's soldiers are reporting that Norvisians have begun... <clears throat> have begun an armed uprising throughout the city. They say they're rising up against the Queen's unjust rule, and, um, there have been reports of... The child of prophecy among there among them? Yes, sir. She has the townspeople so inspired that the Queen's soldiers are having a hard time fending them off. <laughs> now that's more like it. L Lord Spriggan, please stay with us, sir. We need you to give our soldiers order. Don't worry, I'm perfectly calm. Tell our soldiers this. Defend your posts until the Queen's army has been neutralized, after which you are to either surrender or retreat to the Vault Castle. Focus all your efforts on defense and avoid harming civilians wherever possible. Got that? Remember, only the Queen's soldiers should be fighting this child of prophecy. Tell our soldiers that their only concern should be defending Norwich. Oh, and tell the guards stationed at the Bell Tower to stand down. I'll go greet our guests myself. Yes, sir. All right, Gouda of Caldia. Let's see what you can do. I hope you've got what it takes, because everything is riding on your shoulders. If the child of prophecy really does have a shot at victory, she may not be such a bad investment. Besides, I was getting fed up with pulling the wool over these damn fairies' eyes. All right, that takes care of most of them. We can handle the rest. Go on ahead to the gate, Gouda. Percival needs your help now, not us. Please watch Garrus back too, Gouda. She has a bad habit of being reckless. Got it. Be careful, you two. I have a report from Captain Landon, sir. They've taken full control of the South District. I have a report from Captain Aurelia as well. The Queen's soldiers near the main gate have retreated after losing 20% of their force. Great work. Now go do the same for the North District. We're going ahead to the Vault Castle. Take anyone who surrenders into custody and have Aurelia's squad look after them. Yes, sir. Understood. <sighs> Ooh, this is a lot harder than I thought it'd be. Gareth, Habitrot, you two stay here. Muramasa, Artoria, Da Vinci, Gouda. The five of us will infiltrate the Vault Castle. I trust that's okay with you. Okay, just try and stop me. I've been waiting to smack the smug out of Spriggan for a while now. You said it. We're nearly there. My, my, still so fiery, I see. Now I'm really glad I went to the trouble of securing that route in for you. None of the Queen's soldiers are stationed in the Vault Castle. Once you get past Spriggan's guards, then... Wait a second. The front door is open. I'm not sensing any soldiers in there either. It looks like the path to the bell tower is all clear. You think this is a trap? Probably yes, but not for us. This trap is only for Artoria, the Child of Prophecy, and Queen Morgan. Spriggan really is a sly old fox, isn't he? He's just handing the bell right over to us. Makes sense, though. He gains nothing by trying to be pro too protected at this point. He must be trying to surrender without defying the queen. He wants to be able to deny any involvement in ringing the bell. Well, this is a surprise. I thought we would never be able to take control of Norwich without ringing the bell. But if Spriggan has pulled his soldiers back, he must have no intention of fighting. That means our battle to occupy Norwich is over. We no longer have to ring the bell to win. That said... Whether we go ring it now or not is up to the Child of Prophecy. If she does, it will be de declaration of war. There will be no going back. I hate to play into Spriggan's hands, but I doubt we'll get another opportunity like this. Let's go. Bell or no bell, Spriggan is still inside. 
Between him just letting the calamity happen and the stunt he's trying to pull right now, I can't just let him go. I want to know exactly what the head of the Earth Clan was thinking when he made those decisions. Huh, we didn't run into a single soldier on the way up here, let alone Spriggan himself. I've got a hell of a bad feeling about this. Chills, even. Be careful, there's something here. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Capless, Capless, where are you, Capless? I smell paradise. I hear Avalon. I see, so you finally come. There, magical energy is collecting on the ceiling. This density, it's a night call. The one who saves us shall be Britain's undoing. Ah, curse my dead body. I will gladly give my soul for the Earth Clan in exchange for your abominable body. It's gone. That night call must have been here for a very long time. Didn't exactly go peacefully, though. Hope you're at least resting now, old one. Anyway, that seems to take care of the last obstacle in our path. All that's left to do now is ring the bell. Well done. Well done indeed. I must thank you for finally ridding the bell tower of the ghost that's been haunting it for the last century. Now that is what I call a swift resolution. It was the finest thing I've seen since I first set foot in Fairy Britain. Once again, your power leaves me at a loss for words. Spriggan! Oh? Why are you glaring at me like that? The battle is over. Your round table army has defeated the Queen's soldiers. Norwich is now free of the Queen's oppressive regime, and it's all thanks to you. I, Norwich's own lord, couldn't be happier about this turn of events. What do you say? Shall we toast to your victory? Ah, but where are my manners? Apologies for my lack of consideration. If you wish to leave, by all means go right ahead. My soldiers will gladly clear the way for you. We were told you were the one who called the Queen's army here in the first place. How can you do that and still claim to be innocent? Yes, I did make a report to Her Majesty. The calamity caused a great deal of damage, so I requested she send soldiers to help with the restoration efforts. Any responsible lord would have done the same. Unfortunately, it seems there were some bad apples among the Queen's soldiers who thought to treat our more rebellious citizens quite brutally. Ah, but once again, your timely intervention prevented any of my citizens from coming to harm. And for that, I owe you my thanks. So that's what you're going with? The Royal Army's attempted purge of any hint of rebellion had nothing to do with you, huh? Okay, that's fine. At this point, there's no way we can prove it one way or another. But what's your game plan now? Norwich has fallen and your citizens are sick of you. Do you really have time to be hanging out here chatting with us? Don't be ridiculous, Leonardo da Vinci. I must say, for such a great mind as yours, that was simply uncalled for. True, Norwich may have fallen, but that is a temporary situation at worst. Since the Child of Prophecy is leading the Round Table Army, you must only be here for the spell. I very much doubt that you occupied Norwich with the intention of keeping it for yourselves. Well, I suppose you may be considering using it for the Round Table Army's base of operation. But as you have just ably proven, Norwich is quite vulnerable to invasion. Of course, if you want it to end up raised to the ground for treason like Sheffield, far be it from me to stop you. Why, you slimy little... Now, now, don't bother. No, le no sense letting this one work you up. And trying to hold him accountable for his crimes would only be an even bigger waste of time. He doesn't believe he's done anything wrong in any case. 
Oberon, when did you get here? Uh, just now. Luckily, my trick with the restaurant worked like a charm. I'm glad to see that you're all wrapping things up here nice and neat. I knew you could do it, Percival. But you've done a pretty poor job with the aftermath. If we were going to kill Spriggan, it should have been during the chaos of battle. And now it's just too late. It would be one thing if you wanted to get rid of Norwich, but you'd never do that, would you? Get rid of Norwich? Oh? Do you need me to explain it to you, foreign mage? Don't bother, I'll sum it up. Spriggan has demonstrated his neutrality to his citizens, thereby fulfilling his role as their lord. As a result, the fairies of Norwich still recognize him as their leader. So they definitely won't be happy if you kill him now that he's shown he's open to peaceful discussion. And that's not all. While Norwich's artisans may all hate Spriggan, the other residents who use the artisan services consider him indispensable. Remember how I said that Norwich is on the verge of becoming a human city? Spriggan's policies are essential for fairies who want to maximize their profits above all else. That's what makes him so tricky to deal with. Sure, half of Norwich hates him, but the other half supports him. So you can't just kill him without a very good reason. It would make us public enemies. And not only that... Without Spriggan to negotiate with the Queen, she would declare it a rebel stronghold and just take it over herself. And since we can't protect the city, letting that happen would essentially destroy Norwich. There you have it. To kill a ruler is to effectively kill their nation as well. If what you want is to destroy Norwich, then by all means, go ahead and execute me. You're not bluffing, are you? You really do mean that. You don't care about the safety of the Earth Clan, and you have no wish to keep Norwich safe. But you also apparently don't care if you live or die. I don't get it. Your actions seem so purposeless and incomprehensible. It's almost as if you're... That's right, human. You're no fairy, Spriggan. You're what they call a changeling. Someone who drifted here from proper human history, aren't you? Exclamation point. A human clan head? Uh, but that's impossible. There's no way he could keep up an act like that for so long. Fairies dif distinguish between other fairies and humans by scent, magical energy, and appearance. No one fairy is exactly like any other, so as long as someone could meet the right criteria, they could definitely pass as a human-looking fairy. For scent, they would just need to make a cologne that approximately smells how a fairy smells. Their comparative lack of magical energy they could have they could have they have could be disguised with a mystic code. And as for their appearance. Hey yeah, his ears look like fairy ears, but aside from that. Humans can have their extremities surgically modified without many negative side effects, so that's no big surprise. What I want to know is how you solve the aging problem. You've been Norwich's leader for a hundred years now, and makeup can only do so much to make you look younger. I'm afraid to ask what you look like underneath all that. I don't have the slightest idea what you're talking about. However... Let's say, just for the sake of argument, that I came from the same world as Lord Gouda, Lord Gouda there. If I did, surely you could imagine something I might want. I have no attachment to Britain, the fairies, or the Queen, nor can I go back to my old home at this point. Indeed, I can never go back to being John Smith the Human, even if I wanted to. No, all I care about is... a place you can call home. That's not exactly right, but you're not far off either. Personally, I don't care who sits on the throne. Queen, Child of Prophecy, whoever. It's all the same to me. All I care about is keeping this vault castle safe. My role as the Lord of Norwich is only a means to that end. One of the tricks to survival is serving someone stronger than you. Right now, that means working for the Queen. But depending on what you do next, that could easily change. You see, he's the most annoying kind of person to deal with. He's neither friend nor foe. But never mind him. Norwich 
<clears throat> Nerich never had much of a military. Once we ring the bell, we won't need to come back here again. Spriggan's private soldiers are just that. Private soldiers. I can't imagine they'd ever be a threat to the Round Table Army. Right you are! Now, do you understand what makes me tick? If you think I'm not worth killing, that's fine with me. Very well then, this jester will go see himself to the corner. If you wish to ring the bell of pilgrimage, please be my guest. Still, I will say that, jester or not, I do have hopes and dreams of my own. I doubt I have much longer to live, so I hope I'll get to see the Child of Prophecy defeat the Queen before my time is up. Okay, now that that's all settled, let's get to the main event. Are you ready to do this, Artoria? Salisbury, Gloucester, Norwich, and Londinium. Salisbury, the city of wind where humans can fairies coexist. Gloucester, the city of flowers that glitters bright, but hollow. Norwich, the city of smiths where all kinds of fairies and humans compete, swindle, and help one another. And Londinium, the city of ruins where everyone smiles and cares for others despite all the pain and loss they've suffered. Sixteen years. The time I spent as the child of prophecy in Tintagel. Let's watch over her quietly. Let her cook. Okay. I'm going to ring the bell. Don't worry, I already know how. Stand back, everyone. Song of Paradise, voice of the inner sea, you who were born to be selected to decide the fate of this land and to see justice done. The bells of the bones of inception shall show you the way. Forgive us these sins. Ding dong. Tink tink. Is it noon already? Seems a bit early for that. Maybe it's not the usual cathedral bell. Wonder what it is then. Sounds weirdly happy and sad at the same time. <laughs> My chest feels tight. What a nostalgic sound. Is that a belt of pilgrimage, Lady Aurora? Yes, it is. It must be Norwich's bell, meaning the Earth Clan has accepted her. <laughs> it looks like your plan worked, Oberon. Though I do feel a little bad about tricking Woodwoes. Congratulations, Artoria. Thank you, Gouda. Now at long last, we can finally take the next steps forward. This sound, it feels like it's ringing out across all of Britain. And this frequency, it doesn't sound like joy so much as... Aha, now I see. So that's what they mean by pilgrimage. There's the first one. What a relief. It's about time she did something worthy of the Child of Prophecy. I was more than a little worried when she accepted the Queen's invitation to Camelot. But now... <laughs> the war will finally begin. I can't wait. Can you, Koyanskaya? Her Majesty the Queen versus the Child of Prophecy. The Tamlid versus the Round Table Army. I wonder who's going to drop out first. I wonder who's going to have the last laugh. Who would you bet on, Koyanskaya? Oh, maybe you put your money on Kaldia, the real dark horse. <clears throat> Kaldia can't possibly win. They're not even a player in this game. But having said that... In your case, betting on Caldia may not be such a bad idea. 
Fairy Britain's market value is about to tank after all. So if you know what's coming, maybe you should consider a different possibility. Don't be ridiculous. There's no way I'm getting out of this game after all the trouble I went to set up the pieces. Oh yes, just you wait, Koyanskaya. I'm going to make things right no matter what happens. Lady Murian. Koyan Booba, I mean Koyanskaya. Huh, so that's what a Bella Pilgrimage sounds like. Doesn't do much for my soul. Well, it's good Norwich is out of the picture. About time she finally got serious. Anyone worthy to be my rival should have no trouble at all ringing a bell or two. What an ominous sound! Is that one of the bells of pilgrimage? What happened to the soldiers we sent to Norwich? What is Lord Spriggan saying about this? It's the child of prophecy. She banded out. She banded allies with the Round Table Army, and invaded Norwich. What was Woodwose doing? How could he let the Round Table Army make a move while he was in Oxford? Barrel Gut was right. We should have captured and killed her when we had the chance. Order! Order! Thirty ambassadors, one hundred officials, close your mouths. High Queen Morgan is about to speak. Hear her words and obey. A bell of pilgrimage has been rung. Send word to every lord and fairy in the land. The child of prophecy is no longer my subject. I name her an enemy of the state. All who offer her aid of any sort shall be branded the same. Fairy Britain abides no enemy. It crushes them without mercy. I command Woodwows, Lord of Oxford, to begin an attack on Londinium. I shall weigh his success in this battle against his transgression in permitting this advance on Norwich when determining his punishment. There is no place for the child of prophecy in my Fairy Britain. Ooh, the High Queen's made her decision. That accursed child of prophecy is as good as dead now. War! There's going to be war! Oh, I can't wait. This is going to be so much fun! I've been bored out of my mind these last hundred years. Now I'll get to hear the lower class fairies writhing in agony again. Oh! Ho, 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 ho. Thank you, child of prophecy. Thank you, round table army. Thank you for starting a bloodbath. Hmm. <laughs> No sooner do they see preparations for war being made than they scurry off to their homes. Two thousand years and fairies are still just as fickle and bloodthirsty as ever. Portune! Awaken, Knight Portune! Yes, High Queen. Guard Knight Portune at your service. It is an honor to have been freed from the chessboard. The two hundred years since I last saw you have done nothing to diminish your majesty's beauty. Never mind the formalities. Here, drink this. This water will grant you memories of all that has transpired in the last 200 years. Very well then, if I may. Now I understand. The child of prophecy, huh? I am sorry my clan head's prophecy has become such a headache for you, High Queen. Speaking of which, where are my fellow Mirror Clan fairies? Who has replaced Einzel as their head? The Mirror Clan is gone. You are the last of their kind, Portoon. I see. What an ironic twist of fate. I parted ways with Einzel to serve your majesty as a knight, and thanks to that I am still alive today. That is surely the optimal future you once saw. Your choice was the correct one. It is why you are alive today. Now you will once again make use of your prognostication. You will accompany Tamlin Gawain and Tamlin Lancelot as their advisor. And if by some chance worst should come to worst, I trust you know what to do. Yes, High Queen. We Guard Knights are fully aware of your wishes. You would like the Tamlin to go to Oxford to assist with the attack on Londinium, yes? Have you gone soft in the head? 
Woodworth needs no help with Londinium. I have another mission for the Tamlin. There is someone else who has been a thorn in my side for too long. The attack on Londinium is merely a sideshow. Well, that's finally one bell down. Wait a second. Artoria? Huh? Ah, what's going on? Why am I glowing so much? She must be burning up. Water! We need water! Da Vinci, can't you whip out some fast-acting coolant or something? Grown-up me might have been able to, but me? No way! It's gone now. What was that? Wow, okay. Uh, sorry for panicking there. The prophecy never said anything about that. That aside... Yeah, I can tell. This is really... Yeah, it really is. I'm not a fairy, but even I can tell. Why are you all staring at me like that? You're making me nervous. Did I do something wrong? No, you did something right! Artoria, did you just get crazy strong? And now, for a fragment. My body's tingling all over. What happened to me? Wah! She's awake! She's awake! Look, Ash! The weird girl with the even weirder iron armor finally woke up! She's gotta be an evil fairy! Can I kill her? Can I? Habitat, hot You're alright! Thank goodness! I was worried that huge lightning bolt might have burned Norwich to the ground. Norwich? What the heck's a Norwich? Is that the name of the forest you came from? <clears throat> it? A beach? Where did Norwich go? Where is Senpai in Artoria? What's going on, Habitrot? What happened to Norwich? I don't know it. I don't know any Norwich, and quit calling me that. That's not my name. I'm Totorot, Tamlin Totorot, and don't you forget it. <laughs> eh? Totorot? You mean you aren't Habenyan? Habenyan? I don't know what that is, but I love it. That's way better than Grimalkin's yapping. Ash! Ash! You gotta see this girl! She's amazing! I don't know what she's talking about, but everything she says is amazing! She's gotta be a mage just like you! Coming, Todorot! And please, just stop just calling everything you've not seen before Magecraft, would you? Hello there! Nice to meet you! I'm Ash, and this is Todorot. Welcome to Britain, the Isle of Fairies. Would you be so kind as to tell us your name? It must be fate that brought us here together. We would be happy to help you if you like. Uh, thank you. Um, my name is Mesh Kitty A Light. Ash, are you Ash the Savior? Oh, so you know about me. Are you from Londinium, then? I'm sure I would remember seeing a fairy as strong as you, though. Hmm... I'm sure I'm sensed an incredibly powerful spell similar to the Infinity Mirror out here on the East Coast. Oh, I know. Are you a Northern Fairy, perhaps? Did you mess up the teleportation and end up out here in the middle of nowhere? 
a northern fairy, so she's one of Queen Mab's people, even though she's so cute. That'd make her our enemy. Can I kill her, Ash? Of course not. Please, Totorot, just be quiet a moment. Why don't you come with us, Mash? We should leave before any more begin showing up anyway. Come on, our camp is over in those woods. It'll be much safer to talk there. And so, we begin a new story. Or rather, continue a previous one. When Mash rushed in to protect Gouda and Artoria, she was snatched away by Morgan's water mirror. After a moment of darkness, she awoke to find herself on an unfamiliar beach. Surrounded by blindingly thick fog and the crashing of waves. On the northern horizon, she could see a tree of emptiness stretching high into the clouds as if it were holding up the very sky. The fairies only knew it as the world tree, though. But what surprised her more than anything was... There's no wall here. No sign of a wall of light that used to cover all of Britain anywhere. In fact, there was nothing to be seen near Britain at all. Nothing but an endless plain of white seawater. This was the Isle of Britain, in the year 400 of the Fey Era, approximately 2400 years in the past. And this is the story of Ash the Savior's final fateful battle. <laughs>